Joining us now to review some of the headlines for today's newspapers from around the world is Arise News Analyst Emmanuel Ifeni. Good morning, Emmanuel. Good morning, Ruben. Good morning, Rufai. Good, Good morning, Ayo. Good morning. Now, let's start the review with this day, Nigeria's newspaper of record. The lead story at Quara Rally, Atiku laments APC's misrule, pledges to revive Kanji Dam, says oil discovery in North Healthy for development. And of course, if you look at the front page of uh, the Daily Sun, uh, yes, the other major political party, also the Daily Sun, yes, I will address agitations in Southeast. Tinubu pledges to review Nigeria's reward system. Of course, the politicians are on the march again at different rallies. The APC in Quara, no, the APC in Eboy, while PDP in Quara uh, yesterday. And uh, at the Quara rally, Atiku made a lot of promises. $10 billion, that's the amount he mentioned, to provide jobs for youths, women, and to address so many other issues. While Ashiwaji Bola Ahmed Tinimbu in the Southeast also made so many promises. We'll record these promises and um, we'll hold them accountable at the appropriate time. I think that's also the job of the journalists to do. And Rufai took exception to your comparison of happily married responsible men to politicians who don't keep promises. Yes, that's how you put it, that politicians are like uh, uh, married men who, when they are wooing their wives, but no, we don't do that. On Sorry. behalf of the Association of Responsible Sorry, Married Men. Sorry, I apologize. Yes, sorry. we I keep apologize. our promises. And Ruben is already nodding. And Ayo Myro is also nodding because a certain Mr. Myro Essay made promises and he's keeping them. Totally, he's always uh -huh. he's superseding so, the promises, so, actually. So, I apologize. Thank you, Ruben <laughs> Rufa, for, for maligning the image of happy living, responsible married men. Anyway, but promises are meant to be kept. And politicians, sometimes when they make these promises, not with intention to keep them, but at the appropriate time, whoever wins will tabulate all promises made and will check, fact check one by one as they get along, whichever party wins the election in 2023. Because we're also aware that, um, of course, a number of the promises APC made on the rostrum in 2015. Of course, the president had to dissociate himself uh, from some of those promises. But this time around, I'm sure we'll be more thorough uh, in itemizing, listing these promises. Now, if we look at the leadership newspaper, the leadership newspaper, APC Muslim Muslim Ticket, Dogara, Achuba, six others disown Babacha over support for Obi. Yes, if we just go back to the Daily Sun quickly before we come back to the leadership, the Daily Sun. Yes, beside the master, you see the XSGF Babacha Lawal's group endorses Peter Obi. But members of his group, as uh, the leadership now, now the leadership is reporting, Dogara, Achuba, six others disowned Babacha over support for Obi. He did not consult them before he endorsed Peter Obi. Well, clearly there's division in that camp. That is what it tells one and all, that they are not all on the same page in which direction they are to go. Because, of course, there are members of the APC who are opposed to the Muslim-Muslim ticket of the party. But what is the way forward? That is where there seems to be a division within that group. Now, the Punch newspaper, electronic results transmission. Beware of fraud. Opposition wants INEC. APC recants. Electoral commissions under pressure over beavers, PVC, uh, PDP. APC has hidden agenda in 2023 elections 
Labour Party alleges, I am concerned about poor telecoms network, says Adamu. Yes, the APC chairman reported in some of the newspapers yesterday as being opposed to the use of beavers. But he has clarified that what he was actually saying, and I thought I also read that in the, the body of the story, he was expressing fears that he doesn't believe that INEC can't transmit results from every nook and cranny of this country. Some areas, there may be network issues. But I'm sure INEC will be also conscious of that, that the network strength differ from community to community, especially as you get into the rural areas. And they will make provisions to also deal with those issues. The technical team of INEC must be also conscious of that. I think this is the lesson INEC should take from this conversation. Clearly, APC is saying, well, they are also in support of the use of beavers. Now, the Daily Independent newspaper also reporting that story. APC recounts back beavers e-transmission of polled, poll results. Now, the Nation newspaper, yes, at last, the lead story of a newspaper on the current first scarcity. I was wondering whether there's conspiracy about uh, among editors not to bring this biting first scarcity to the front page of the newspaper. But uh, I think the Nation newspaper has uh, allayed my fears. NNPCL marketers differ over lingering petrol uh, scarcity. Yes, queues lengthen in Lagos, Abuja, others. What is the problem? We've not heard an official statement from the NMPC. Is it that as the marketers are saying that the price at which they are getting the petrol has gone up? If that were to be the case, then what next? Is that why there should be scarcity? But the government has a fixed price for petrol and the NMPC will need to make some clarifications because going into the Yuletide period, we have this um, crisis continuing. Of course, usually in December, the, um, the fares, transport fares go up. Mm -hmm. And if you now add petrol scarcity into that mix, of course, it means Nigerian travelers will have to pay through their nose to get to their destinations, to their homesteads during the Yuletide period. Now, the Guardian newspaper, the Guardian newspaper decline in oil, gas output hampers growth amid recession fears. Of course, talking about the, um, the GDP report released yesterday. And of course, the Business Day also reporting that story. Nigeria's economy slows down in quarter three as oil manufacturing shrink. Are we heading for another recession? But the numbers are not looking good and the government will have a word or two to say on that. The Daily Trust also reporting that story, also looking at the bright side of that report. ICT agri boosts GDP to 2.25% in quarter three. Is there any silver lining in that report? Yes, maybe that's what the uh, business is trying to highlight. Now, the New Telegraph newspaper, small arms proliferation threat to Nigeria's security. Monguno Buhari calls for greater cooperation to combat volatility threats in West Africa. Yes, Nigeria has one of the most porous borders inflow of arms. Very easy in Nigeria. And that is what the government has to tackle if we want to mitigate the impact of this small arms proliferation uh, on the security situation in the con country. Of course, the Nigeria Niger border, very porous, amongst other borders uh, in the country. Now, if we look at the Vanguard newspaper, yes, this is one that will also worry Nigerians. Brain drain. We now have one doctor to 6,400 patients. Medical experts 
says Nigeria in emergency situation. 38.7 of Nigerians suffer healthcare depreciation. NBS, as NMA, asked federal government to act fast. Of course, Nigeria has become the harvest ground where the UK and other advanced countries come to harvest for trained doctors. And by the way, Nigerian doctors, especially in public higher institutions, are trained at subsidized rate. The government subsidizing just training. Because if you compare what um, students pay in public universities to study medicine, the other day I checked one university, 50,000 naira for the session. That's what they pay for tuition. If you go to one of the private universities, I know very well, first year, three million medicine. So you can see the difference. But when we train these doctors, we don't take care of them. They move to other countries. In the now familiar term, Jackpa. Now, something the government has to address. Now, the foreign newspapers quickly. Two minutes. Yes. OK, the foreign newspapers quickly. Foreign students, the Times of London, foreign students to face ban from universities. Yes, as part of the measures to stop um, immigration. The prime minister said yesterday that all options were on the table after it emerged that total immigration had uh, reached an estimated 11 million in the years to June. About 560,000 people emigrated, leaving net migration at a record 504,000, up from 200, over, a little over 200 in the year before. And the measure is to stop, of course, students who come for studies bringing in family members. Ruben Rufai and Ayo, if there is time. OK, Manuel uh, well, this is a very interesting story. Because Swella Beverman, uh, the Home Secretary, has been under a lot of pressure trying to solve the issue of migration. First, we were told that the Prime Minister was going to work out a deal with mm. France with regard to channel crossings. You remember that old story about having uh, satellite places in Rwanda, in Peru, and other places where migrants can be taken Taking to. to process and now, Suela Bravama is saying she is determined to ensure that, one, you know, the number of foreign students is cut down. Only foreign students who are going to elite universities will be allowed. But the, uh, the uh, foreign, home, uh, foreign department is kicking against that. The uh, Department of Education is kicking against that. And this is likely to do, uh, divide, uh, uh, you know, the Tories, the MPs, uh, down the line. Because the foreign students that we're talking about, international students, as they are called, you know, contribute a lot in terms of revenue. They are a major source of funding for universities in the UK. And if care is not taken, don't be surprised. If some families in Nigeria go to England to go and carry placards and say you can't stop uh, Nigerian children from coming here. However, it's a market-driven thing. There are options in Canada in other parts of the world. So, but I, 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 I see that this will generate a lot of debate. Two, Nigerian Tribune. I don't know whether you mentioned Nigerian Tribune. They also have this interesting story, Panto South, Babachi on his own, Dogara's yeah. group. Yeah, we read, we took that story. Okay, you took the story yeah. from Punch or another paper. However, you recall that Asho uh, Ajobala Amel Tinubu of the APC had said also, in addition to what you reported, that the people who are opposing him within the APC are persons who wanted to be running mates to him. And uh, he didn't choose them. So as far as uh, Asho Ajobala Amel Tinubu is concerned, this is just sour grapes. Uh, but Dugara, we have also been, uh, uh, Babachi, former secretary to the government of the Federation, we have also been told by the Dugara group that he's on his own. Oh, yeah. Finally, I think one story that I saw, which I think we should uh, also highlight, is the fact that yesterday there was an event at which the Minister of State for Education informed the Nigerian public that history is now back on the curriculum. Oh, I heard that story. I was 2009 to 2010 or thereabouts, they removed history from uh, the uh, school curriculum in Nigeria creating a generation of Nigerians who don't know the history of their country, who have never heard of uh, uh, the Kanembonu Empire, who do not know about the old oil empire. And these are the people we're, we're preparing for the future. It's a major mistake, a monumental mistake, the minister said. And I think it's good that he admitted that. He now says that history will be back on the curriculum and that 3,700 teachers 
will be trained yes, you know, to, to build history. capacity to teach history. I think it's a good development. Nobody in the future should remove history because a nation without history is a nation without memory. And it's good that the measure, the step, uh, has received the support of the Sultan of Sokoto, who is also calling on all traditional rulers to support the government's effort to recognize that history is important. So, Robert, if, is if you are looking for volunteers mm. to join the group of uh, history teachers so that we can have enough at the same time in the pool, I will volunteer, you know. To teach you robo history? No, history. I <laughs> to teach you robo history. Ruben, for the record. Even robo history is important. Yeah. No, it's part of Nigeria's history. Yes. So, so. Ruben, I made A1 in history. So I want to... You are to talking to yeah. another A1 person. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. so, you see, we have volunteers here. <laughs> so, so, Dr. Abati and Mr. Fennig. What, what, what I just want to say is, it's good that they brought history back into the group, but they should teach the real history, not skewed history. Yeah. Because history being taught is also a matter of the curriculum. Is it the truth that is being put in the curriculum or otherwise? Because we also know how people segment history when they teach it because it's not favorable to them. We also know it's a method of brainwashing when they teach it. So it should be holistic so that we hear all sides of it when it's being taught in class so that it's not a case of some warped theory people start to teach in place of history. So I think there should be focus also to, on the syllabus because you see, education is not just to educate the mind. It is also a method of media. In fact, the education of a country is the greatest form of media that country citizens have from a tender age up to their adulthood. I repeat, Education is the greatest form of media and interface a citizens of a country will have from their childhood to their adulthood. So let's also focus on getting the syllabuses right, the curriculum right, and teaching them the relevance and the truth of history. But kudos that it is back. There is a National Excellent. Council on Education that yeah. works out the curriculum. the curriculum. So that will be the responsibility of that council. And they already do. Yeah. And no, no school can just go and teach anything. No. Yes. There will be a curriculum that will be worked out at the national level. Mm. Absolutely. Right. Excellent. Well, take, uh, I was uh, just going to comment on the, yeah, obviously on the, on the, on education and, of course, um, the uh, debunking the story de or, or coming out that Honorable Dogara coming out to say that Baba Chalawa was speaking in his personal capacity and not representing the northern politicians as we see on screen. Very strong and again to see what the conclusion would be hitherto Honorable Dogara, Dogara and Mr. Babachalawal had spoken out against the Muslim Muslim ticket by Shibadu Tinubu and Shetima saying that they supported him at, uh, you know, at, the, um, at the primaries that put them in but once he took on Shetima as a vice they were saying that's not okay. their position. Okay. All right, thank you so much, um, Mr. Emmanuel Efeni, half analyst, half history teacher, yeah. and of course, alongside Dr. Abati. <laughs> <laughs>